kitchen for every every day. There always is. It's just finding out how to do hard things is usually useful. Is <laughs> the moral. And it wasn't just the Higgs boson particle that you guys had discovered. What what is quark gluon plasma? Yeah, so that that's um, shortly after the billionth of a second after the Big Bang. So yeah, you, you end up with a soup of um, quarks and gluons. So quarks are the building blocks of protons and neutrons, and gluons are the things that stick them together. Um, so a, a proton has two up quarks and a down quark, and a neutron has two down quarks and an up quark, and so on. So they're the constituents, the protons and neutrons, which are the constituents of our atomic nuclei. Um, so if you go if you go to very high temperatures or high energies, then the protons and neutrons fall to bits, and you end up with a soup of quarks and gluons, and that's a, a quark gluon plasma. And it's insanely dense, right? Yeah, well, very high energy. So um, so you get that. So we've been exploring that by because we don't we don't only collide protons together we can collide uh, lead nuclei together or silver nuclei together at the LHC, and that's when you make these kind of soups of nuclear matter, if you like, very hot nuclear matter to explore that physics to that that nuclear physics. Wow! And I was reading something about the the weight of of that stuff, that like uh, a sugar cube. Like what? What is the what is the actual weight? Well, it depends how dense it is. So I don't. The I mean the the what the thing I remember is the sugar cube of a neutron star material, which is I don't know how many hundred million tons. I can't. Remember. You know the, it depends. But so I don't know with the quark gluon plasma. I don't know what number you're. There was uh, something. There was one of the things after the discovery they were talking about the massive of weight of quark gluon plasma in like yeah. almost incomprehensible yeah yeah i don't know the number but but something crazy yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. now one once these you got something yeah. oh here it is 40 billion <laughs> oh my god a cubic centimeter would weigh 40 billion tons oh That's good cool. lord i didn't know that i know david <laughs> i know david actually <laughs> That's so crazy. Birmingham. yeah the densest matter created in the big bang machine yeah. huh. and what are they doing right now it's um, closed for engineering and upgrades. Uh, um, upgrades. Yeah. I mean, one thing we're trying to do is, one of the things in particle physics is that you want as many collisions per second as you can generate. And um, the, we have a collision, we have a, a, what's called a bunch crossing at LHC. We can vary it, but it's, it's something like 25 nanoseconds, depending on what. So it's really, we get a lot of collisions per second. And, and the more collisions per second you can get, the more chance you have of making interesting things like Higgs particles or whatever else may be out there waiting to be discovered. I mean, it's possible there are other particles out there that we haven't yet discovered Ooh. that could be within the reach of the LHC. And if this one that was in Texas had gotten built and it was more powerful than the, than mm. the LHC, you'd have even more opportunity to do something like that. Yeah. Now, when these things are created by these collisions, how long do they last? Oh, fractions of a second so the the general rule in physics in particle physics is that the the more massive it is and the more things it can decay into the faster it'll do that <laughs> so basically the, the heavy things decay into light things and so the only the stable particles are things like electrons um and some of the quarks um the, the up quarks and down quarks are stable things but uh so so, so everything tends to decay very fast so we're talking fraction, billions of a second, fractions of and how are they less than that? How are they registering its existence? Like what is uh, what is being used to measure it? So what you see if you collide, what at the see we collide protons together, and protons have got loads of stuff in them, loads of gluons uh, and the quarks. So you get a big mess first of all. So most of it's a load of particles are spraying out, which you're not interested in. But sometimes when you when let's say a couple of the, the gluons bang together and they can make something interesting like a top quark or a Higgs particle. What's a top quark? A top quark is a very heavy, there are six quarks. So there's up and down, charm and strange, bottom and top. Are charm some, some, and strange? Yeah. So so strange was literally in the, what was it, the 50s I, when we discovered them, someone said that's really strange. And that's, <laughs> so it's a strange, a new kind of particle. Um, so that, yeah, so we have six quarks. Um, they're in three families. So the up and down are one family. And then the charm and strange are another family and the top and bottom are the third family. And so we, for some reason, so the only thing, the only particles we need to make up you and me 
are up quarks, down quarks, and electrons. But for some reason, there are two further copies of those, which are identical in every way except they're heavier. So there's the charm and the strange quark and a, th and a heavy electron called a muon. And then there's a, the top and the bottom quark and another heavy electron called a tau. And that's it. So that so there's, there's this weird pattern that we don't understand. So we don't, it seems like you only needed the, the first family to build a universe. Right. Right. But for some reason, <laughs> there are two copies. Now, um, when something... And the heavy ones decay into the lighter ones is the point. So when you make them, they're not around very long. And just to answer your question, what happens is that when they decay, they throw their decay products out into our detector. So we, we take a photograph of the cascade of particles that comes from these heavier particles decaying. And the trick is to patch it all up to see, to try and sort of work out what everything came from. Wow. Now, when they fi find these unexpected particles, then what happens? Then there's the study of them. Then there's the, yeah. the and everybody gets together and go, okay, what the hell is that? Yeah. What is that? So, what do we do? So we want to know with a Higgs particle, uh, we know what it does, which is it gives mass to everything. So it's fundamentally the thing that gives mass to all the other things in the universe at the most fundamental level. So, so electrons, for example, and the up and down quarks, they get their mass from their interaction with the Higgs. That's why they're massive. That's another reason we exist. You know, we go right back. We wouldn't exist if there wasn't mass in the universe. And the Higgs is ultimately responsible for that mass. Um, I keep saying, I keep caveating it because then you get other sorts of mass that are generated, but but that the fundamental basic seed, as it were, is from is from the Higgs. Um, so what we want to know is we want to know how that thing behaves, and the way. So you want to study it. So you want to make a lot of them, so you can take a lot of pictures of it and study it a lot and see exactly how it does that. And so that's what we're doing. That's what we're engaged in at the moment. We're making high precision measurements of the way that particle behaves so we can understand th the laws of nature. I mean, that, that is the laws of nature. How are those particles behaving and what are they doing?